serious people who were at the scene of mass murders or public shootings. Will you tell your story? I was present at the Madrid train bombings in 2004. I was going to visit a friend for a few days and taken Street Patrick's Day in a foreign country. I flew in early on March 11th and caught one of the trains heading to the central hub station so I could take the metro into the city center. Right before arriving one of the bombs exploded in the carriage ahead of me. It was pretty fucked up. The carriage was unrecognizable and I couldn't hear much of anything after the explosion. I could tell the woman across from me was hurt pretty badly, so I picked her up and exited out the blast hole. There were people streaming out of the train and passers by jumping the barrier to help. Total chaos. By the time medics showed up I could tell the woman had bled out. I used to work near the World Trade Center. After the first plane hit, I went outside to take a look. When the second plane hit, it was like a huge fireball in the sky, hovered over our heads. It was only after I ran back to a safer location when it hit me that the people were inside that fireball. I went back to my office. Lots of confusion, uncertainty, etc. When the first tower fell, my building shook like it was an earthquake and the lights flickered on and off. We ran down the stairs to the first floor, but couldn't go outside. Too much smoke and dust, it was blacker than night through the windows. After what seemed like an eternity, the smoke cleared enough for us to leave. Everything outside was covered in ash. It looked like a grisly snowstorm. I made it one block when I heard a terrifying rumble which I just knew was the sound of the second tower falling. I took off running. I looked back for a moment to see a column of smoke filling in the space between the buildings. I faced forward and kept running. I was at my friend's house on DP right outside where Elliot Roger was finally killed. We had gone to my friends for drinking and hanging out, but halfway through the night we got a campus alert text that there had been a stabbing and multiple shootings around Ivan to stay inside. The next thing I know there are tons of flashing lights outside the house. We went outside and found out from a cop what was going on. I remember being afraid to leave the house because we didn't know if it was one shooter or multiple and walking home on the street side of my girlfriend was one of the most miserable walks I've done. I also remember feeling betrayed that a member of my community would do something so evil. I'm also extremely grateful that the cops made sure he died that night. Words cannot express the deep sense of loss and loathing that I feel towards him. This was at the University of Arkansas. I walked up to the building where my first class of the day was going to be. It was barricaded off and tons of people were just standing right across the street from it. I saw a single policewoman stood flat against the wall, peering in ever so often. All I knew at the time was there was a shooting. Then I promptly left to go to the student union. The hell I was going to stick around in case there's a shooting at the crowd. Later I found out it was a student who went to kill his professor then he turned the gun on himself. The university erected a memorial for the professor. Sure. Northern Illinois University shooting on Valentine's Day. The shooting happened in a building that I walked through pretty much every day to get home after class. At the time it was essentially to large lecture halls separated by a long hallway. I literally had my hand on the door when I heard the first few gunshots which were probably 10 or 15 feet away and decided instead of getting involved in that unknown situation I was better off pulling the other people nearby who had hit the deck and herding them into the set design room nearby and locking the door. It's not the same as someone being on a shooting spree, but the DC sniper was the fall of my senior year in high school. I was in an academy program, so every other day I spent the morning at a different high school about 25 minutes away. Driving between schools was terrifying, because when the shootings happened, the schools locked down and wouldn't let anyone in or out. I was super scared that I'd get locked out of school. My dad was actually inside the home depot when the woman was shot in the parking garage. It's hard to describe it's sort of like the fear that goes with being near a public shooting, only it went on for weeks and people still had to go to work and school and all. This isn't exactly public, but when I was in middle school there was a fire at my friend's house in my neighborhood. Turns out her dad beat her mother to death and then doused her body in gasoline. I remember walking down the road that day to go to the pool and being turned around by officers and firefighters. I saw the fire and haven't looked at that house the same since. 
I was in Oslo during the bombing before the Utoya massacre. My family were on vacation there, from Drammen, which is about a one hour drive. We just went to see the city, and my mom and sister wanted to go shopping. I didn't wanna be there, but I had to. We was about to head to the shopping mall Larkadon, and we drove through the government quarter with the radio on. Five minutes later, the music stopped, and there was a message that an accident had happened in the government quarter. My mother works at an hospital, and was studying to be a nurse, so she went back there, and my sister took me to the hotel. As we arrived we turned on the TV, and we saw horrifying pictures of destroyed buildings and hurt people. I saw my mother in a shot as well, helping a woman with a wooden plank, stuck in her head. It might sound unrealistic, but it was terrible. After about half an hour, the police told my mom to leave the area, as ambulances had arrived. So she came back to the hotel, and told us what happened, and that was that. Meanwhile, I had a childhood friend on Utoya. We didn't think about her at all, cause why would we? A bomb had detonated right by us. So about 2 hours later, we was eating food, and I was on my laptop. I went to check the news on the internet, and a shooter was on Utoya. My sister started crying, cause she was best friends with this girl. It was horrible. Hours went by, and it got confirmed that she died. It's fucking crazy how shit can go. Some weeks later, we went to the girl's mother, and it was my worst experience ever. Just her eyes, knowing that EHR daughter was gone, was enough to make me tear up. That's my story. Thanks for reading. I was in the Philippines about a week ago. I was heading to the local farmer's market. The traffic was horrendous. While we were stuck in traffic, all I hear is screaming. I see a guy running towards near us. Next thing I know, he fell to the ground and the shooter went up to him, continued shooting him, and took his wallet. I was just sitting in my vehicle, unable to move due to the traffic and my only reaction was, holy shit. This can't be real. <laughs> Roughly 9 years ago, my family was driving to our grandma's house on Christmas when the car in front of us blocked the road. A man got out of the car, and walked over to another car, parked on the side of the road. I saw the man pull out a gun and open fire into the parked car. Two women ran out, and tried to get across the road to safety, but sadly did not make it. My family panicked, and cut into a nearby parking lot, and hid from the gunman. This event occurred outside of our local hospital. Being 9, this was the most horrific thing I had ever witnessed, and was scarred from it. I had nightmares about what I saw, and had to be pulled from school to get psychological help. Anytime we passed the hospital, I would have a panic attack, and have flashbacks to that day. I have recovered mentally, but I will never forget that day. About 2 or 3 years ago, there was big news of a disgruntled designer who had gotten fired from his design job 2 years prior and shot a man, who he had worked with, in the head right adjacent to the Empire State Building in Mick. I worked in the building that the man was shot in front of, and was in my way to work, when I heard the shots. I thought it was construction, or whatever because that's way more normal than gunfire in the city, and kept walking to work. I remember seeing a woman crying, and then a whole bunch of other people crying, and freaking out, so I hurried to work. The police hadn't blocked the scene of the crime off yet, so I ended up walking straight toward the body, and seeing the man laying in his own blood on the ground in front of my building. I ended up crying on the phone with my boss in the Starbucks next door trying to figure out what to do, and how to process all of this. Turns out the man, who was murdered worked on the floor below me, and was a sales guy, and wasn't even the person the shooter intended to kill. According to folks who worked on the same floor as me, he was a nice man. Every time I walk past slash through that part of the sidewalk to enter my building, I think of that day, and in the summertime, on a certain day, flowers will appear at the entrance of our building. I had just exited the subway, and noticed chaos on the street. Asked a random guy what was going on, and he told me to look up. There a few blocks away the World Trade Center was on fire, the first plane having just hit. I went into my office with me, and my office mates watched the whole thing through the window and on TV, so we could hear the commentary. We were watching when the second place hit, when the paper rained down, when the people jumped and when the towers fell. The whole thing was remarkably quiet. We stayed in the office for a while in complete shock trying to reach loved ones on phone lines that were completely jammed. 
I was able to reach my sister in Norway via email, and she was able to reach the rest of my family. When we finally left the building everything was covered in debris and choking dust. I walked all the way to Bryant Park to find my girlfriend, and then to Hell's Kitchen to find my cousin. The three of us walked to a hospital on the Upper East Side to donate blood. There the lines of donors stretched four blocks. We waited a while, before they told everyone who was not an O-type to leave. We were there a couple of hours and the ambulances we were expecting never came. Even the doctors and nurses were walking on the street wondering where the injured were, there really weren't any. Fighter jets kept buzzing the city, and every time they flew over people either stopped in their tracks, screamed or crouched, thinking it was another plane crashing into town. Finally we gave up and walked home. I got home got out of the dirty clothes went to take a shower and instead threw up. I tried watching the news, but every channel showed the same thing, and had the same lack of information. Finally to keep my sanity I grabbed a book my girlfriend had been nagging me to read. It turned out to be the first Harry Potter book. I finished it in one sitting, while I tried to keep my mind off things. The next day I went to a nearby bookstore, and bought every other published Harry Potter book, then spent the rest of the week reading them, so I wouldn't have to think about the reality around me. JK Rowling saved my sanity, that week and someday I hope I'm able to thank her. I still live in Nick and still work not far from the WTC. To this day, however I still, have not been back to the site. I just can't bring myself to enter. I live in a very quiet town in the southeast of England. About 7 8 years ago I had popped into town, to visit the bank and withdraw some money. As I'm facing the ATM, I hear what sounds like a car tire popping. Obviously I turn around fully expecting to see maybe a car crash, or a car stopped in the road, but instead see two guys firing handguns wildly at a white van. As this happens, armed police in civilian clothes, but uniform hats jump out of the van and let rip on these guys with what looked like semi-automatics. They go down like sacks of shit. This has all happened in a blink of an eye, and within seconds of me standing there open mouthed, another police officer grabbed me, and put me inside the bank, and locked the door, while they secured the area. Then they were gone. Turns out it had been two highly wanted men from London, who had escaped to our little town, about 75 miles, away to hide out. So yeah, that was a fun afternoon. I guess it's more significant, because I'm British and that shit only happens in the movies for us, let alone anyone living in a sleepy seaside town. I was present at the 7 over 7 bombings in London, in fact my family and I were going to be on one of the trains that was bombed. From what I remember it was all over very quickly, there was a loud explosion and I remember being very impressed about how about an hour after the explosion almost everything was back to normal. I was pooping in a target in Queens, nigh and a shooter went into the store and shot a few people in the electronic section. I didn't hear anything in the bathroom, but as I walk out I see a bunch of Koreans, I was in Flushing slash Little Korea, running and screaming and telling everyone to get out. So I run out front and just kind of made my way back to my hotel. Pretty uneventful story compared to some of these, but it was intense for the minute or two after I left the bathroom. About two years ago I lived on Broad Street in Philly. My third story view consisted of a shabby BP gas station and a dilapidated car wash. Next to my building on either side were two bars slash nightclubs, so it became kind of common for drug dealers, users and other shady people to park their cars in the lots across Broad and then congregate outside the clubs. Often things got out of hand, mostly drunken fights over something shitty one person did to another. The cops usually had one or two units parked across broad those nights. The crowd was so obnoxious that the cops probably intervened more nights than not. One Thursday night I went to look out the window for a bit. It was probably a little before midnight and the club crowd was quiet but noticeable. A few small groups were smoking and talking below our living room windows. The BP lot across the street was empty. Only a beige sedan was parked at a gas pump facing broad. Then a cop car pulled up parallel to the sedan on the other side of the pump, and a couple minutes later a middle-aged black man got out of the sedan, and walked over to the passenger side window of the cop car. I had been staring out the window for a few minutes and actually hadn't noticed anyone in the sedan, which struck me as strange slash suspicious at the time, that the man had been merely sitting alone, that is, until a cop pulls up. 
The man is hunched over the cop's window trying to get him to roll the window down. The cop reaches over and rolls it down, no power windows I guess, and they talk for a few more minutes. I'll never forget how casually the man pulled a semi-automatic from behind his waist belt and emptied the few rounds in the clip into the police car. The people below my window started to run in all directions. But no one made a sound, all conversation had stopped and everyone left the clubs as quickly and inconspicuously as they could, getting into their cars and speeding off, not saying a word outside, or even taking a second glance across the street. Maybe for good reason. Over the next 5 minutes there were 43 police vehicles, I counted, crammed on the block from my sidewalk and all over the BP lot, as well as to helicopters involved. After shooting, the guy just got into the sedan and drove down across street. I'm not sure if the cop made it. He was pulled from the car by the first unit to arrive, and they drove away in a hurry. I don't know if the shooter was caught, but I'm really hoping that he was.